If you've ever watched a war movie, you've probably seen the tense moment. A soldier takes aim, fires a sleek projectile, and seconds later, boom, an enemy tank is reduced to a smoking wreck. That right there is the power of an anti-tank missile. But here's the real question. How can something small enough to carry or mount on a light vehicle take down one of the most heavily armored machines on the battlefield? Today we're breaking down how does an anti-tank missile work? The fascinating mix of engineering, tactics, and sheer destructive precision behind these weapons right here on History of Simple Things. Before we dive into missiles, let's understand the problem they were built to solve. Tanks are like the medieval knights of modern warfare. Heavily armored, extremely mobile, and armed to the teeth. In open battle, a tank can dominate almost anything in its path. But the moment tanks appeared in World War I, so did the countermeasures. At first, infantry tried using big rifles and artillery against tanks. Then came portable anti-tank guns. But as tank armor improved, getting thicker and tougher, those older weapons became less effective. What was needed was something small enough to be carried by a soldier or mounted on light vehicles, but powerful enough to pierce through armor like a hot knife through butter. Enter the anti-tank missile. In the simplest terms, an anti-tank missile is a guided projectile designed to destroy armored targets. The guided part is what sets it apart from older, unguided weapons like bazookas or rocket-propelled grenades. Instead of firing and hoping you hit, anti-tank missiles can track their target during flight, either automatically or with help from the operator. This guidance gives them incredible accuracy, even at long ranges, and allows them to strike weak points on a tank instead of just smashing into its thickest armor. Anti-tank missiles come in several guidance flavors, each with its own pros and cons. Let's break them down. Why are guided missiles? Believe it or not, some missiles are literally connected to the operator by a thin wire. As the missile flies, control signals travel down this wire to adjust its path. It sounds old-fashioned, but it's reliable and hard to jam. The BGM-71 tow missile is a famous example. Laser-guided missiles. Here, the operator or another spotter paints the target with a laser beam. The missile detects the reflection and steers toward it. It's precise, but can be affected by smoke, fog, or dust. Infrared heat-seeking missiles. Tanks generate a lot of heat from their engines and exhausts, and these missiles home in on that heat signature. The famous American FGM-148 Javelin uses this method, letting soldiers fire and then immediately take cover because the missile does the rest on its own. Fire and forget systems, the gold standard in modern missile tech. You lock onto a target before firing, and once it's launched, you don't have to do anything else. This allows soldiers to avoid enemy fire while their missile is in the air. Tanks are designed to withstand punishment, so punching through their armor isn't easy. That's why most anti-tank missiles use a special type of explosive warhead called a shaped charge. Here's the genius part. Instead of exploding outward in all directions, the shaped charge focuses the explosive energy into a narrow jet of molten metal that can reach speeds of up to 10 kilometers per second. This jet slices through armor as if it were paper. Once inside, the sheer force and heat can destroy the tank's crew, ammunition, and systems in an instant. Some advanced missiles even use a tandem charge warhead, two explosions in sequence. The first blast destroys any reactive armor, those blocks on modern tanks that explode outward to disrupt incoming rounds, and the second blast punches through the main armor. 
Depending on the model, anti-tank missiles can be fired in different ways. First, man portable. Some are light enough for infantry to carry, like the Javelin or the Russian Cornet. These allow soldiers to strike tanks without heavy vehicles. Second, vehicle mounted. Many missiles are mounted on jeeps, armored cars, helicopters, or even drones. This increases mobility and firepower. Third, fixed positions. Some are set up on tripods or fortifications for defense. When the operator fires, a small booster propels the missile clear of the launcher, and then the main rocket motor kicks in. This design keeps the backblast from injuring the operator and helps hide their position. Not all anti-tank missiles are blindingly fast. Some move slower than a bullet, but compensate with long range and pinpoint accuracy. Others are much faster, giving the target less time to react. For example, a wire-guided missile might take several seconds to reach a target a few kilometers away, while newer fire-and-forget missiles are designed for rapid engagement. Either way, the goal is the same. Hit the target before it can escape or retaliate. Looking ahead, we can expect smarter, faster, and more autonomous systems. AI-assisted targeting longer ranges and stealthier flight paths will make them even harder to stop. We're also seeing experiments with loitering munitions, drones that can circle an area and dive on a tank when spotted. But no matter how advanced they get, the basic principle will remain the same. Find the weak spot, deliver enough force to get through it, and do it before the target can hit back. The anti-tank missile might seem like just another piece of military hardware, but it represents a fascinating mix of engineering, tactics, and psychology. It's small compared to the tanks it destroys, yet it can change the course of a battle with a single hit. From the wired missiles of the Cold War to the fire-and-forget systems of today, the story of the anti-tank missile is really the story of modern warfare itself. A constant back and forth between offense and defense, brains and brawn. And as long as tanks keep rolling onto the battlefield, there will be engineers somewhere working on the next missile to stop them. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.